been, it feels like it's been a minute, but it's only been a couple weeks. And we're back uh, with Comic Convos episode 67. I said we're slow, we're slowly crawling our way to 100. We'll get there eventually, I swear. Just like we'll get more things going, such as posters in the back, which is why we have a nice Venom and Carnage front and center in honor of Venom this week. Look for more posters to post up as weeks go on, just to kind of keep the motif going. But yeah, I mean, it came out Friday, well, Thursday, Friday, technically, right? Yeah, whatever. This should be supposed to be Friday, so yeah. But Thursday, early release, and then Leo always sees it early with the press pass, so. Mm, just. Yep. Uh, I thought it was good. Uh, if I had to give it a rating, I'd say. Well, rating from what? From 10. From 10? Okay. I usually do from 10, just the standard. I do 7.5. It was a good movie, but not a great movie. I think I want to say seven and a half as well. It it meets the basic criteria of a good movie. It has funny. It keeps me entertained. Yeah. And it doesn't betray the character that it portrays in mm-hmm. any way. And I think that's sometimes what fans don't want. It's like even if it's not completely inaccurate, they don't want a betrayal. And sometimes we get those in comics, like Fantastic Four, the newest one, betrayal. Everything about it. Oh, the you talking about the comics? Or no, the, no, the oh, new from the movies. movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, just everything about it was it was felt yeah. like a personal yeah. attack. We don't, we don't speak that Yeah, we don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's yeah, that was a bad one. I'm I'm actually just the deal is supposed to finish with uh, Disney and Fox here soon. Once I'm really hoping finish. that they finish the close down because then once they do, oh, what was that? Just someone ping ping. No, no one yet. Yeah. No, that's okay. Unless but yeah, doing some kind of special, your special special in or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm hoping that deal falls through because then we can finally get the real Fantastic Four movie we deserve. Yeah, well, in every real Marvel movie, really, I mean, even at this point, we're limited on Avengers cast members. We're limited on origin story stuff. Dark Avengers has uh, s- been awesome. Yeah, that's going to be great. So they're but ha- I want to see that, but my favorite part of Dark Avengers is Sentry. There's absolutely zero way yeah, you can do a movie no with him. Do that. So they were already kind of speculating who would be uh, Hawkeye would be Ronan, maybe. Then they would have uh, you Bucky could. as the Captain America. And then they would have uh, See, that Ant- runs Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Um... Who else? There was another character they had mentioned maybe that would be possible. Probably, uh... Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff they could do. What's up, Leo? Hey, Leo. Good to see you again, bro. Hey, also, Cesar. What's up, bro? Thank you. Can't hear. Oh, see, every time, huh? It looked like it was, was, was it working. Going, but no, it's not. Hmm. Let's do it again. Oh. oh. What's up, Leo? Hey, Leo, good to see you again, bro. Hmm. Hey, also, Cesar, what's up, bro? Thank you. Can't hear. I oh, see. Maybe it's only if you see it from another one? Oh. Hmm. What's up, Leo? Hey, Leo, oh, good to see enough. you again, bro. That's working. Hey, also, Cesar, what's up, bro? Thank you. Can't hear. I oh, see. Maybe it's only. He said just barely can. Weird. Because my volume is not that loud, man. Well, you're all the way up, but. I mean, we can crank it if we need to, but I don't know. maybe just a little bit. Yeah, it's weird though because it's it's not very loud. It shouldn't be super soft either. I mean, I'll crank it up another. Okay, yeah, it is kind of low. Yeah, there it goes. Now it's low. Let's see. What? Hmm. I mean, I can double the volume. I can go on and change it. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, I'm trying to avoid this damn static pitch that's been going. Oh yeah, that's also something Leo and you or you probably didn't even get to mention is the uh, final season of uh, Fairy Tale coming out. Oh yeah, that too. Which is interesting. If honestly, I've I read the comic from like chapter thirty. Once once it started coming out, like that's when I started. Yeah, you know, it's kind of low key right now. It was loud for a second, so it did hear it earlier. That's weird. I haven't done anything to change it. I mean, I can double the volume off it, but it'll just sound hissy. Probably, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. 
It was loud for a second, so I did hear it earlier. We're not Dude. speaking in the right. So we can even change it. I mean, I can double the volume up there, but it'll just sound hissy. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was loud for a second, so I did hear it earlier. I mean, I guess that's it. I don't know. There I thought it was sounds a little bit better. All right, there we go. I think that does. So which is weird because the action should be fairly loud. Yeah. This is only like a twenty percent. Okay. It's All weird. Right. Weird, weird, weird. I wish I could check on my phone, but I don't know what to. Oh, you you hide it for yourself. It just disappears. <laughs> it has like legs and it walks away from me. It's got a symbiote. It's it's uh definitely there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought Venom did a good job all around. Like, not a great job. Like I said, it's not a cinematic masterpiece. It's no, it's not something that I get shocked at. I was shocked. My father actually really enjoyed it. He said he'd go and see it or pay to see it a second time, which he oh, almost okay. never does. He'll never pay to see a movie a second time, except for Transformers. He was in Transformers. He went a bunch. <laughs> but that's because that was like. The first, you know, it was like, that, ah. that movie when it came out, though, was the it's shit. It's still really good, actually. The first Transformers movie? Just to, like, just the way they did the CGI. Oh, like, yeah. The I mean, even the, the even the comedy, like, that was one great thing about having Shia LaBeouf in it was that he's this goofball. At least at the time he was. Now he's, like, some weird old... Old man that tries to rap. And, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. My thing that, that got me with him, and I don't really even want to go into it, was he claimed that... And I... Yes, men do get raped, but he's like, I was raped at this public oh, auction. You know, he said that. Yeah, yeah, he was like, well, was other good. than that, then yeah, that movie was good though. And then, yeah, I, you know what that does look good though? The Bumblebee. Yeah, the new one where they're revamping their looks. I the like that. Looks. They, yeah, they do. The thing is, it looks so much more right. kiddish, but it also looks so much better. Yeah, because like, they don't look like in trance. Like that was the thing. They looked really grimy and gritty and too real. Yeah. They, you know what I mean? They didn't have their outer shell, so you saw their mechanical parts a lot of the time, and it was just like, it was it was cool. It was, but it was a darker, grittier version of that mm -hmm. that I think is one of those things where if you lightened up the tone, you could do darker things with the story. Kind of like, oh, I forget the animator's name, but there's like an animator from the 80s who's famous for that, where he like split mm -hmm. off from Disney and it did a bunch of dark animated films. Oh. He, there's there's a couple, rock a doodle do. Ooh, I one love of Rocko he, Doodle the, Doodle. the same guy who does that does all of the dark. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's, that's good. But anyways, yeah, we'll sorry. Keep that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he does all of these dark ones. Like he does that. He does uh, what's it? Legend of Nim for Escape of Nim. With the... Are you talking about Secret of Nim? Secret, Secret of Nim. I love both Secret of those. Of he did uh, Forest Ooh. Gully, I think. So all those eight like eighties nineties movies that oh. were on the. On Those the verge so of being, good. so I, I now I gotta look up his name because he really was. I di I didn't like Secret of Nim too though. That that ah uh, yeah serious. I mean it was a thing. It was so dark and and gritty the first they, one. And that's that, that that's next what one's he's so happy and that like, was because he didn't have to do actually the second one. I think this is the guy. He actually recent no he's still alive I guess. I thought he died recently, mm -hmm. but Don Bluth. He's a the, an animator that's like he yeah he did. Secret of Nim, Land Before Time, and American Tale, all that. Land good. Before Time as well, huh? But that was kind of like Stephen King. Yeah, he as well, that was Stephen King more than Don Bluth. Or not these Stephen, are, um, Steven Spielberg. St yeah, Spielberg and Lucas. Oh yeah, that's right. He George Lucas some, uh, and Stephen Spielberg. I do, do see that. his name pop up in there as well. Oh, they're, they're like the trolls at Central. Man, I remember those. He, he these, did that too. All these uh, Titan A E. The Pebble and the Penguin as well. Uh, Bartok, I remember the bat. Remember Bartok? Banjo, the woodpow cat. I remember the small one, but this one was like a religious one. All Dogs Go to Heaven 2 and stuff was alright, but not great. I like the first one. He, he has some other ones. I don't know why they're not showing. But he does. Oh, Italian AI was one of my favorites as well. Yeah, he does a lot uh, of good a stuff. A -E. Yeah, I always forget what it's. Um, he's also part of the Dragon's Lair 3D Return of the Dragon game. <laughs> Look at Fox Image, an affiliation of Steven Spielberg. Yeah, that's when he was doing an American Tale, Land Before Time. Mm. Rock a doo doo. -doo. Uh, yeah. No, the, I don't think. I think that one's. No, he did do Rock a doo doo. -doo. Do 
but I don't know if he did it more than the Pebble and the Penguin. Man, that was a good one. There's so many. Cool. The, I mean, all of these ones. I, I'm honestly surprised there's a couple that he didn't do. He had his fingers in a bunch of these. But he was famous. The reason I talk about him is he was famous for uh, those darker stories. Mm-hmm. Like and and he did like super sexual anthropomorphic women, like the woman from Rock a Doodle Doo. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Where she's like in the big red dress, mm-hmm. the, you know what I mean? He's super, you know. To be fair, if you went by the opposite standard, he did the same with men. You know what I mean? In the in the animal form, the men are big and bulky in their animal. Mm-hmm. They're not just chickens. I don't know. You know what I mean? They're not just chickens, man. Like, That's a good movie. Now that you mentioned that, I'm gonna go home and watch that movie now so, today. <laughs> I I hadn't watched some of those in a while, and I went back and watched them, and they're like so good. storytelling epic. Yeah, that's so that, good. They're like timeless. They have great storytelling elements yeah. that make them timeless. You know what I mean? Like I feel like a lot of those, minus like the culture gap from the time, like technology and stuff. Like, oh, why did they use a cell phone? Like I know you can't imagine that. I know you can't imagine that, but they're they're not in here. (laughs) There was a time where people counted things by putting beads on a string and and pulling them back and forth, just letting you know. But uh, that's just real. What was your probably your favorite thing? I guess from Venom. Then, like I said, I think, and it's probably everyone will say that it's the interaction between Tom Hardy and the Venom personality, like. Everything else helps with it, but their interaction is gold. Yeah, that's the best thing. Every time time they're on screen, you're laughing, and you're, like, thinking, and you're, like, endeared, you know what I mean? Because they even make the violent, you know, I don't want to take the, but the power, 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 you know what I mean? That, that's very, like, deathly humor, that kind of morbid thing that Venom is sometimes known for, being, like, this dark, unintentionally funny guy, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um... And even just, like, the way they treated it, like I said, was really good. They treated it like he didn't know what was... Yeah, it was really good. They did the character good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, there were, like I said, there were things about the filmography and the cinematography that were a little off in parts. There were little rough scenes sometimes. My favorite scene was, I did not find that cool when he, like, reattached himself back to the motorcycle. I mean, we've seen that in the trailer, but... It wasn't like the most. That was my my uh, my cousin said. I knew I was gonna hate that part when I saw it in the trailer, and I hate it. <laughs> and I, and like, I hated that part yeah, too. Yeah, it that's looks bad. It just I, doesn't look. That's good. how I felt too. Yeah. I just find. If I had to pick, like, yeah, that one's definitely one. The, I don't like the scene. <laughs> yeah, that scene's not great. If I had to pick like a single scene though, that, that was like definitely the one that messes with me is that one. But it's also another scene. <sighs> early, on, it's like earlier on when he gets to symbiote. I feel like. Not, not earlier than that, but just like early on when, when he's like it. sweating and no, it it's with the symbiote. And I can't remember what he's doing, but it's oh, it was the face, the face he makes at his neighbor. Oh yeah, you didn't like that scene. I it, I liked it and didn't because it was good, but the the actual cinematography for that scene is very like they try to do like hard like horror. Yeah, it felt like they like they at first meant for I, it to be hard, and then, but then they, had to to they had to change. Like, I feel like they cut out forty everything. minutes of horror, which is fun. I don't think it would have done action with that script. I don't think it would have done well as a horror. With that plot, you know what I mean? Yeah, because that you know what that scene reminded me of kind of reminded me of the uh, the sinister character a little bit. Yeah, just like the quick flash of him seeing his face like that. Yeah, yeah. just like yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think. He looked like the vampires from this one comic that I can't think of. Oh, the I Am Legend comic. He looks a little. They she they looked a little like that with these like big bulging eyes and giant smiling teeth. <laughs> Look but, like bug-eyed vampires. Yeah, they, like I said, there was some things that I didn't like, but like everything else was pretty good. Yeah, so generally good to go see. Yeah, I would. Yeah, would would see again. I might not pay to go see again, but would see again. Yeah, would, yeah I'll rent there's it. definitely some stuff that I had didn't get on my first run through that I could go through and see, like and catch. And the second one for sure is, would be much much better. I think. I think if a second watch. The yeah, that they're, they're going to it's, go. Yeah, it'll be cool, especially if they're doing the carnage thing like they're teasing. That'll be great. You know yeah, I mean? so I'm hoping yeah if they do okay. do that if they do that soon. And then I'm trying to remember they have the second tra- teaser trailer at the end. 
besides that one, what was it again? I saw it, and I don't oh, remember. It, oh, you're talking about the very end of it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, people said there was two post credit scenes, and so I did end the same them for the whole thing, and then it wasn't really a post credit it, scene. It, it was. was more of just a promotional to their next movie, which is the Spider Verse. So. Yeah, it was, but, but it was still, still, I still yeah, it was it, cool because I'm really excited to see that. Did movie. you hear they screened like 30 minutes at uh, New York Comic Con? Yeah, they loved it. They loved it. I my parents loved it. They, from what they saw, they were like, "What is this? We gotta watch this." They uh they keep um uh, making it out to be Toby Maguire's Spider Man. They said it's not official, but it's official. <laughs> it's Toby Maguire. At least, well, that's funny though, because in that thing, they're like. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just like, and that is what happened to Toby Maguire Spider Man. He just caught the bad end of every stick. You know what I mean? That's one thing I liked about those ones was that that Spider Man just caught all the worst luck. He yeah. was not look, you know, good looking or no, he was Toby Maguire. <laughs> he wasn't good looking or athletic or amazing. He was Toby Maguire. Damn it. Uh, he was, no offense, he, Toby. Good, though, he was a good Spider Man. I I still loved his first one, and then the second one was still pretty good. I love the, the Doc. The thing is, one. the third one the ruins third it for everyone because they ruin his Venom, character, well. and then they ruin his character. Yeah, they do both. They they ruin Venom and him that movie by giving him that suave arrogance that he never. That was like he couldn't even play that part. That there part was, was it's not for him to play. It was terrible. He could play the more aggressive part, probably, yeah, all right, but, but the, he wouldn't have been able to suave, play the suave, yeah. I Which, have, even yeah. in the comics, like, yes, it was Peter, like, a little more naturally from on dope or whatever, but he wasn't, like, crazy. But, yeah, so that's why. And this one, like you said, it has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Can confirm. Zero mentions. Although, Easter oh, egg. He, the director already said that. Oh, they knew they wasn't going to be. Gonna be. But people are all pissed chance. about it, so I want to give them the chance now to fucking know for certain and be like all right if you go and watch it after i've already told you it doesn't have spider-man and that's your complaint shut up <laughs> <laughs> like literally like you went in knowing if you didn't want to watch a movie of with venom without spider-man don't go this is not don't movie. watch they said it's like it's like when they did they did something similar to another movie where they like straight up told us something was gonna happen and then when it happened everyone was pissed and they're like we they didn't you. like it. We told you this was going to happen. If you didn't like it, all you got to do is not watch the movie because that was, we already warned you. That's like gratuitous sick. That's like getting angry after seeing the mature content warning and it's the been 30 minutes since you saw it. It's like, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute. This is violence. Yeah, we told you it was going to be violence. You know, I don't know. So it's just like one of those that I don't Did you get. like the fight scene between the two symbiotes? I liked yes and no. Like, there was a lot of good and a lot of bad. I liked the actual clashing between the two of them. Especially when they become, like, more fluidous. Yeah. Yeah. I won't get too much into it, but a lot of it was one, way too quick-paced. We spent way more time seeing Venom uh, fight everyone else. Uh, and yeah, I, I wanted the, that to be more epic. Yeah. Needed to build. Yeah. It and it was so quick in a flash. And not only that, the actual merit of the fighting, yeah. zero. Yeah. Right? And it's the Pavlov's uh, gun thing that we talk about. Or what was it? No, it's not It's not Pavlov's. It's uh, Hollow's gun or no, Czech, Kirk, 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 Czech Dog's gun. <laughs> What are you? Chekhov's gun. It's a concept of how every element of the story should contribute to the whole. It comes from Anton Chekhov's famous book of writing advice. If you, in the first fat act you hung a pistol on the wall, then in the following one it needs to be fired. Or else there was no point in showing the pistol on the wall. You're wasting time in the storytelling yeah. narrative. Right? So they did that a lot. Uh, so they did, I know they did that. Remember the dog from the hospital? Yeah, there was yeah that that's one of those Pav the Chekhov gun things where it's like you have it now you have to use it and like yeah like you said I wanted a more epic fight scene than that and they spent a lot more time that was the other bit one complaint I could say the amount of time it takes to get to the action yeah the, it felt the, like it didn't build up as quick as it yeah, should it, have been it, it was almost halfway through the movie before he even finally started talking to him and then I mean, it wasn't halfway. It feels like it, but it's Maybe only like it 30 only minutes. Like th okay, 30 minutes. But that's okay. too much. Yeah, see, that's what I said. It's still too long. There was 15 minutes of that we could have cut out and added to the fight scene. You know what I mean? Something in there. Just saying. So there's like some story. And yes, it was 
some of it was important because it was the build on to setting his life up but at the same time it it wasn't like the comics like that was that was them making it like the comics when it didn't necessarily have to be um well they they i guess i understand why they had to do the um more focused on him being the you know a reporter because they kind of went away from the Catholic him being his good and right and wrong. I and mean, then, it was that, but it was newspaper is kind of his good and right and wrong. You're like, hey, that guy's bad. That's why he's bad. I know he's bad. <laughs> That's true, but I mean, even just on the other one, like it was that like they were they matched it to the story of him being sad at the time of receiving or whatever. That was the whole point of when he received Venom. He's down on his luck, no yeah. job, no. And so they recreate Instead those of scenarios. Spider Man ruining his life. It was really his <laughs> right, guy. right. That was the other thing. So, and that was one other thing I wanted to mention that it's like Easter egg spoiler slash Easter egg. Close your ears, tiny children of innocence. But on the original crash scene, and I feel like this is, doesn't really contain plot, so it doesn't. It's not very important. It's just an Easter egg. But they did the Malaysia crash scene, and they did mention Jameson. Oh, okay. I didn't even hear that. Yeah, the one of the they one of the guys they pull out alive is Jameson. Hmm. Okay. And so, for me, that gives me at least somewhat some credibility in my mind to be like, all right, well, this is less of like a individual tale, more of an else world kind of story where it's like okay you could actually still have spider-man in this universe theoretically he's probably never gonna show up but the other thing too is they would have to set up secret or kind of eight issue into it like you know how does spider there's just so much they could have that's the thing like they for. they would have to do a bunch which is why that's okay to not do it and yeah. then bring him in like this yeah. into a world where it's like okay venom exists but he's not exclusively connect or venom and spider-man can exist in the same universe without mm -hmm. being exclusively connected by doing this by saying all right the symbiote instead of landing in new york what was it the hudson river or whatever the name that jameson came down i can't remember where they got him but in the crash mm -hmm. landing in the crash landing that's where the iron chunk comes back from after he gets rid of it the first time remember because he has it and then you know it's it's one of those things because they talk, because remember the whole Jameson crash in the Hudson River, that story that's going on at that same time? I don't remember that one. Uh, you talking about in the comics? Yeah, I think so. It was also in, they, I think they touched on it in the animated series. Yeah, maybe that's where I see, remember that more from the mm -hmm. animated series. Because I, I remember that it's supposed to be the symbiote first sees Spider-Man on Battleworld. Right, and, right, and then they and bring it through. And then he comes back and brings it, and then they kind of kept with it. And then, from my understanding, is like Todd wanted to write for Spider Man or to draw, sorry. Right. And he's like, "Well, I won't do it unless we change it back to the original costume." So he made up his own. He kind of made up this whole thing. Now they're just doing that. Yeah, that's and there was a whole controversy. Thing. So that's, that's when he brings yeah Venom into it and Eddie Brock, and then yep. the kind of concept comes to fruition after that. Yeah, and so like I thought that that was an interesting place. So in this one, instead of originally the Spider Man symbiote coming or the symbiote coming through Spider Man just assume it landed in malaysia and finds its way to brock anyway yeah because i yeah i do remember that the one you're talking about because that does sound familiar from animated series yeah i just remember and and i know they based a lot of that on comic book parts you know what i mean especially spider-man and the x-men series they were like write some new stories fuck that <laughs> <laughs> literally just nope <laughs> Um, they they knew they were smart though. I mean, everyone loved those. Fucking, those are really good. I really Netflix did. brings it back. I mean, it's on Hulu. The Spider Man I, one. Oh, the yeah, I watched it sometimes, but they have the second part. If you part wa too. watch, pay attention. But there, he doesn't punch a single person in any episode if you watch it. Oh, that's so crazy. Because they had to uh, for parental advice. Yeah, yeah they had they. If you watch it, he literally uses his the web almost every, every time. time. There is literally not a single time he That's punches crazy. anyone. If you watch it, That's funny as hell. Is that where did I hear that from? Too, I can't remember. I was watching something that talked about that. But yeah, that's a funny little thing to know about that in the show. Yeah, I I just laughed because, like I said, I found him on Hulu. I watched both of the series all the way through. Cause they're, it was a, it's a good show. It, it is. was like a good drama show. And it's too. not like, and even, like I said, even holding up the time, it does decent. And then I mean? just the beginning, that's what really got me into it, the beginning intro song. Oh, yes. Yeah, Spider-Man. 
Spider Man, the way they have their little, yeah, their guitar. So I'm not, I'm not sure if this is rumor. I think it's been confirmed, but that was written and performed by Aerosmith, one of the one of the writers from Aerosmith. I think that, that song. I think that's what I hear too. I, was I hear it, and I'm that. wondering if it's like a you know. Let's see, who wrote the, the Spider Man? <laughs> Spider Man stuff. Huh. Did you see that came out of the rainbow? Yeah, it, 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 okay, so that's how it is. The theme for the series was performed by Joe, Joe Perry, Perry from go. Aerosmith, go. but written by Shuki Levy. Okay. But it is done by Aerosmith, so there we go. Back to the fiction. Did you know they did a rainbow bright comic? I didn't hear about that. I'm actually not a big fan. I just couldn't I pass up one where Le, Le Rebo. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I'll check it out. But... It's the origin story, too. Oh, her. God. That so, sounds um, terrible. I'm oh like, the art was very when I picked it up because the the front cover looks boss like they did a cool I'll show you front later. cover yeah like it looks cool and like I hate that sometimes when you open they it up you're like no this is so kiddish Which, I'm like, no. there's a couple uh who is it most of the Justice League uh not dark stuff but the Justice when they were doing like the Justice League Prime stuff or something recently it looked they changed artists halfway through it looked terrible they would do great covers and then have like terrible inside art and I was like ugh. <laughs> and like I usually power through it for a good story, but these ones were rough, like R O U F F. I rough. started reading the uh, the yeah, dark, no, that was the, the dark, dark crystal from Frank Miller. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That art, oh, I can't. It's so bad. I yeah, because I like the first panel. I was like, I had to look at it. I was like, it's all disjointed and all. What's going on here? Are, what is but this? That's his, that's the and style. then I watched the the sh the movie, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, he was in a fucking that was his helmet they were trying to do, and I was like, oh, that it looks bad. I, yeah, it's like that's bad. If it I looks so tell. bad, but it <laughs> but the writing on it's yeah, great. Yeah, the story is so good. And it I was is. like, I wanted to read, and I was like, uh, it it's uh, having to stomach through the art because it really is a little bit rough. It's got its own style, and it's not necessarily my favorite one. The thing about the Dark Knight series is the writing on that one is at least good enough for me to dis to like Probably overlook. Going through, yeah, because then I focus on the words, and he also does a lot of long panels where he has like twenty, not twenty, you know, bunch of text boxes, long drawn out reading, and because that's what I mean. This one is messed up, man. Like he does some craziness in this because it's all the future Batman or whatever. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. whole future. Yeah. I wanted to uh, read it off the eventually catch it on or maybe just watch the movie because <laughs> it looks like it's exactly the same oh uh, they are actually they did okay. very good which is why i'm looking forward to into that's the spider verse oh that, that i yeah I'm that one was to watch spot it. on i heard too that's what i, I actually heard. liked it i think it's gonna be great that's good the death of superman was really good i like that one too as well they do I actually like ended DC up liking anime. flash after watching that uh the yeah, the death of Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. Movie, or animated movie because uh, he just was whooping some ass on. He uh, does some work. Is it Paul Dukes? Yeah, Doomsday. Doomsday. No, 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 Doomsday. Yeah, yeah. It he does. People put L's and then don't get me wrong, they overhype him a lot too because he's also taken out by anything as simple as a trap or a. It like literally is like, ha, trap, leg blown off. Well, I'm useless. Did you read Heroes of Crisis? Uh huh. I'm gonna have to pick it up because yeah. I wanted to read it. it. The thing is, it's like and the deaths are permanent. Yeah, that's what I've heard, which I said. don't give a crap about. I mean, other people are gonna be pretty pissed. They killed a lot of mainstay characters. Arsenal. Uh, was it? I can't remember. It wasn't the, Nightwing. Uh, Wally West, right? Yeah. Like I didn't. The new. Just come yeah, back? again. He literally. That's Stop what I said. doing this he to us. He literally just came back. Like that's why we. That's why it doesn't matter. Cause oh, they're they're permanent until next year when a new head writer comes in and decides to say fuck what you said. Unless he wants us. Like, like I said, that's literally they had they. No. Yeah, I like, want him back. for changing this now. <laughs> literally, that's all it takes is a new head writer and then bam, the whole the whole prerogative shifted, or a new lead. Uh, I heard some good things victory. from my ass. One guy, he's like, I like it. He's like, I like that it was like an investigation kind of story, That's... making you kind of figure out who did what. I guess. No, it's it's not. It's, it's not. More, it's more like a real. That's a it's Tom more King like a real life. Of, uh, oh, he failed. Well, I mean, it's okay, but it's the thing about it is, it's like not written well that way. Like it's written almost more like a cross between that and a. The real life New York or whatever, where it's like, 
all these superheroes it's, in the same. It's not like a good story, just because of like PTSD, you know, superheroes, and I was like, oh, all right, I'm, I, like out. I said, I'm willing to check it out and keep it, see it going. I wasn't excited by the first chapter or heroes in Crisis Zero or one for which one was. Wasn't like it didn't draw me in for a first issue. It didn't like feel the setup. Like yes, all these heroes are dead. Why do I care? What's who's doing this and why? What what's the point? You're killing heroes. Cool. That actually doesn't really matter. In the, you're not wiping cities off the thing. You're not destroying the world, taking over a country or planet. Yes, you're killing superheroes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Why? It's why? Going, what's going on? It's like it doesn't lead me to a desire to know why these killings take place. Mm -hmm. The way the writing's been. At least for me. And usually I care about shit. Like when it's like, oh, who did this? what's going on here <laughs> what was it and i find myself having zero care one because a lot of the characters they chose were like crap oh so they only killed like four main characters the rest of them are no dc no who names was the main characters it was arsenal wally west uh i don't know arsenal uh, so he's in arsenal is uh speedy grown up oh okay yeah um there was a couple of the, the little nobodies and then you have two people who are surviving and still fighting in Booster Gold and ha and Harley Quinn. Yeah, it looks like they're the main uh, focus. Yeah, which is the other thing is I don't necessarily like. I'm okay with Harley Quinn's character and I enjoy her. I don't feel like she's a very good main character. Oh, is material. she in the comics? Is it almost the same as her in the animated, or they kind of make her different? It's kind of similar. Kind of they've changed her a lot. They've like, changed her a lot, but like not her basic like character. The no That's more. the biggest change. And then um, she's. She was on making on a team, yeah. She yeah, was the suicide squad. Yeah, so is Deadshot and fucking Killer Croc. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. You know what I mean? The guy who eats people and the guy who kills people for money. She's not in the best of like spots. There and, was, I thought there was one other big major change they did to her. There's something. There's another change. No, not really. Oh, so she's gay? That's been that way. Uh, is it? No, I Pretty much I... since her inception, she's okay. had this like pseudo relationship with Ivy. But I think it's unofficial, though, right? Yeah, now. it's been for a while. It's, <laughs> it's like I said, this isn't something new. They've had that in the shadows for like forever. They're just like now people are like pointing it out. It's like did you read uh, the old Harley Quinn? No, old lady Harley. <laughs> old lady Harley. Almost just because it's a hundred percent a rip and no one's calling it out. It is. Well, man, it is. Good. It's a hundred percent. But no one's talking shit about DC, even though every time any Marvel title is even somewhat similar to a DC title, I get this whole Marvel can't even think of an original idea, and it's like, or you know. Well, you know what I've been re uh, researching a lot on. Have you been uh, reading about this comic skate thing? No. Oh my so, gosh. What's look it up and you'll just be like, what the fuck is going on with the world? Okay, did you ever remember when they did the Gamers Gate thing back in the day, and it was more uh, because of um, oh uh, the diversity that they weren't liking diverse characters in their games and blah blah blah. Oh blah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. There's a there's a whole thing going on with it now too because I follow some of the comic writers and the artists, and they're like big guys that keep talking about it and keep saying like these guys are assholes and stuff but then when i read the comments that they're saying that no we're not bad we just uh we're just trying to say that i guess what they're trying to say is that they're forcing diversity on people and they're hiring people that you know don't really know what they're doing yet just because of them the wanting nice to push their sjw i keep hearing that a lot that's that term pisses hearing, me the fuck i keep hearing off. that a lot in the in there because they keep him because and this is the thing comics are inherently about social justice if if you think about the very concept of a hero yeah someone who does what the police and society cannot or will not right superman batman that's the entire concept the police can't handle it so batman takes care of it superman he's one of those awkward characters that sits in a lot of spots where you can cover mm. a lot of things but in the same way he's still that way of the police and things can't handle it. well here's superman to provide us social justice that we believe we deserve you know what i mean Protect us from the giant incoming comment because we believe, believe as a society that's just not and that we shouldn't be wiped off the map like a schmear. Uh, whether or not that's right, yeah, you know. Uh, but that's my thing is like, you think about it, that's who Superman is is about social justice, about saying, Are you robbing that lady? No, you're not. <laughs> I'm Superman. Literally, that's you can break down the entire hero mythos to that right there. Mm -hmm. And so when people bring, like, 
this social justice, what you're really afraid of is diversity. Let's just say it like it is. Or they're even calling like Ten- uh, Tenacia Coat like he's a racist and whatever. And yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, it's a, there's a lot. Of, I've been reading yeah. a lot of stuff on. It. I was like, I can't believe it went this deep. There's a lot of stuff. Going yeah, people on are this. all over it, and I'm just like, then, if these people are writing the comic books now, and you don't like the comic books, just stop writing. Comic or what books. even happened to was it Kelly Thompson? She yeah, was supposed somebody. to do Vision, but Marvel like stopped, stopped it, and stopped then the whole... she said something, and then she's like, they they basically. Well, she, I guess she fucked up. Not fucked up, but she. She like she said did that something. one thing with the mock because she had her run with uh Mockingbird from Marvel something, but uh she had that um for her last issue she had the. Uh, Mockingbird kind of wearing like a shirt asking about my fem- feminism or whatever and yeah. on one of the covers <laughs> and then I guess li- that just like hyped. lit people up yeah. yeah and then there was another thing too about a lot of like comic female writers who like got together to mourn the passing of a, a comic legend girl who's in Marvel as well and then that also kind of lowballed into something as well and it so- yeah, there's just a lot of stuff. Like I said, there's so it's like people are so focused on all the wrong issues. Or um, there, oh, what's it called? You have to look it up. There's a comic book right now being made by uh, uh, white kind of supremacist kind of group because the story is about like uh, you have to read the story. It's oh, just God. like it's terrible the way they and it got like it got the money from Kickstarter. Like I'm sure it did in States. this in America and, and they, they, they have their own support. publishing company now and they're publishing all these other superheroes now and people are buying the books and they even have like even a comic legend from Marvel, uh Chuck something. I forget his name, but he did a lot of stuff and um I well, yeah, sure, I'm sure I just heard him. Yeah, he was um yeah, he went over there kind of working on some books over there of his own and yeah, well, that's that's his decision but it's not to and he's trying to look yeah <laughs> they yeah you people know i'll have to show you the interview because it because they interviewed him too like asking him like why are you doing like, that yeah and he's like i'm just he, his like, explanation is i'm just trying to do it because it's you can't you have your room to write whatever you want without anybody you know kind of telling you something what what like, I, mean, I don't know i guess so but if nazis getting... hired me to fucking write a comic yeah. book i don't think it would matter if it was my like if i have to put their little symbol in the corner and be like yeah nazi funded i'm pretty sure it's just like uh wait a minute amazon sells the book too <laughs> <laughs> Amazon would sell you your own fucking liver. Yeah, Let's they, not start they try, with Amazon. They try to ask them too, like why do why do you? Because Amazon has no like their, Yeah, they sell send them like their terms and they, and he doesn't like they doesn't fall under those regulations. I guess I don't know. It's weird, but whatever. So yeah, like that's, I, that's I can't. All, all right I now. can do is not support companies I don't. Yeah. approve of as the people think you, you gotta talk with your money look it up a little bit more yeah like i'll have to check that, that out I, I that's crazy and i've heard about this a lot i've heard a lot of like the banter around and it's late honestly it's been, just been kind of like disgusting maybe because it's, there's never any good reasoning and shit behind it like well, never... somebody even asked about it today too at the marvel panel uh, a lady came up you have to read up like because they were asking them questions and they asked them about sales and how <clears throat> did that diversity do at hand you know and bringing down yourselves because of that yeah you know, they're trying to i guess that, that just a lot of people are trying to say that we love diverse characters but we don't like when they're being forced and they're not they're being forced to the point where the story is just like i mean like i feel that, that but that should have nothing to do it. right but that has nothing to do with the diversity of the characters right that all has to do yeah with, that's what it that's what i hear <clears throat> when i hear that i'm not because the thing is the divi- diversity of the characters should have z- almost zero impact on their actual story mm-hmm. as as except for context right it gives them different context different motivations right but otherwise theoretically that should bear very little significance upon the story plot uh <clears throat> and quality of writing any of that stuff none of that should have anything to do with diversity so when i hear that i don't like these these comics are doing bad because of forcing diversity what they're really saying is we don't like diversity instead of we don't like these comics yeah that's really because that uh, why bring diversity into it when really it's the comic you don't like right if the comic was good it shouldn't matter whether they're black Mm -hmm. white alien low you know what i mean they make aliens relatable with superman so it's not about diversity you know what i mean 
that's just a cover. Ooh. That's what I feel when I hear that. Now, it might not be true, but when I hear that, that's all I see because I'm like, you're focusing on something that doesn't actually have bear any merit to the story's credit or ability or any of that. Whether it's the writer or the characters, like ethnicity. Some of people don't even know character, a lot of the characters' ethnicity. For example, Raven. You know what I mean? It was one of those ones where she's originally depicted as Middle Eastern. <laughs> Nobody depicts her as Middle Eastern anymore. I thought she was just a demon. <laughs> she is, but that where she's from on Earth and where she hangs is Middle Eastern. Okay. And she wear, like even in the original things, if you look, she has darker skin. Mm-hmm. She has. It's it's one of those ones where it's like, you know, it's not diversity. We're fine with diversity, but we don't like, or not. Sorry, it's not the the quality of the characters that we don't like. The stories, yeah. Stories but we use, but then why are we using diversity as a cover, right? If we don't like the stories, then we say this story sucks. Don't sell me stories like this. That's how Just we work. Change this. everything back. I think that's too, like you know, because like yeah. them changing it to the Hall of Amadeus, then right? They changed Thor to right, and then they just it. did then they brought did it all Iron back. Man. Yeah, then they all which was it basically back. admitting like, well, we don't have the like conviction to stick with these changes. So we got we, and that's where you can see where they are, just filler changes. Like, that's although what they, they're trying to say, but yeah, at that point, you guys are just pushing these characters on us to say because you want more readers which it makes more sense you want different readers to come in yeah but the but thing being is like not doing a good way of storytelling the name <laughs> uh, which i felt like was complete bull on some of them the thor jane foster thing was set up for years that one because he does good jason Aaron is a good yeah. writer and even the amadeus hulk one amadeus has been chilling with the hulk for, for a long forever time. and has wanted to be the hulk since he started hanging out with him. So you see, and I've always that was that one of those too. ones. Now, and the other thing being, none of the stuff in the comics has anything to really do with SJW content. They don't even usually mention their race or their sexuality or not sexuality, uh, gender. Yeah, I'll, I'll with the exception you, yeah. of the female Thor, mm-hmm. the comics themselves are not like pushing an agenda. The characters they've placed in, like, there's one or two where it's like, well, I'll never have a female, but really, they're mad at her because like. Who are you that you stole Thor's hammer, bitch? You know what I mean? That's how they think. That's property of Asgard. Give that back. They're not mad that she's a woman. They're mad that she has the hammer. Yeah. And the power. And somewhat similar for the Hulk. No one's... He, he's not out there, you know, I'm Asian. Look at me. Yeah. No, he's out there. I'm trying to be a Hulk different from the other Hulk. Now, there were some that were a little, like, light. A lot of the stuff they did with the Fantastic Four were just kind of full copy. And I know that was because of rights and stuff, but they just pulled a lot of the wings off of that. And then, I don't know why people are so, I, I, that's one thing I could think they could have done better with was the Miss Marvel, new Miss Marvel. You didn't, I heard she was, she's she cool. Really good though. She's really that cool. One the, the one that, the one that she's, actually did do a good job on. Which is funny because if any of them are SJW in nature. It's more her. Yeah. And I've heard, yeah, that she, she's she super is. about uh, her heritage and being a girl in society. So like, but that one's just fine. So it's obviously not diversity in SJW. It's content, right? It's writing content. She has good writing. Same with Miles. She's a character that's intertwined with him a lot. They have good writing. So mm-hmm. even though he's a Black Spider-Man, he has his own fucking comic book on like chapter 30 because he has a good writer behind him. So it's we got to stop blaming it on SJW and start blaming it on the writers. Who wrote that piece you didn't like? Stop reading those pieces from... I said, if I find a writer I don't like, I tend to not go back. Same with the artists. You know what I mean? And if I find a writer I do like, it usually doesn't matter what they write, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'll read anything Donny Cates writes. <laughs> he could write a Nazi book about murdering babies, and I'd watch it, because I know he's a good writer and would treat it the way that it, that I would like to see it treated. You know what I mean? If I were to ever see it. But that's what I'm saying, you know what I mean? You, your, your favorite artist, you don't care. You, he could go to a different company, he could stop drawing this comic and do another one, and you will follow his ass. Because mm-hmm. they're good. Because it's not about necessarily the, you know what I mean, those little details, gender, race, sexuality. While they build us, they are, do not define us. So what, what defines people are morals, conviction, you know what I mean, uh, and then purpose. 
And I feel like the best superheroes have that. You know, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Relatable because they're full of morals and convictions. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a man or he's white. And same with even the Black Panther. I feel like that's a nice racial thing to, like, uh, what's it, sympathize with or empathize. And, uh, like, to assess, no, what's the word I'm looking for? To, like, aspire to. But the things that make T'Challa great are not that he's black or that, you know, they're that he's kind and intelligent and hardworking and thoughtful as a king. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Those, those have nothing to do with him being black or a man or rich. You know what I mean? Those have to do with him being who he is as a character. And I, it was actually Captain America is the best example because even without the muscles, right, Cap is Cap. Mm -hmm. It's not superpowers that make us. It's our actions and our stories and our, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a crazy that we focus so much on this gender that has become a whole gate thing. Yeah, you know, have to, I'll have to show you the yeah. videos of, the, of why they're explaining why they, they, they are have, pissed. Yeah. They have a lot of reasonings <laughs> where they're just like this, and I'm like, well, what about the other five comic books or that series where that didn't happen? It's like, And then also, what about all the other comic series that were already in existence and had these very same SJW, like I said, Superman has been about SJW rights for the longest. They just did an issue on him and people were pissed about where he saved a bunch of immigrants from a mob. Oh, really? Yeah, and they were pissed about that. People were mad that he saved people from a mob. And I'm like, are you serious? So you think it's okay to just bring violence? <laughs> That's literally where I'm at with these. Is like, I feel like that literally a lot of it is just a self-excuse to say, like, I don't like this. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of that. I yeah. mean, and I'm sure people do have genuine gripes with their stories being destroyed, but it's such a pain in the ass to see it like yeah, that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it just it sucks that that's what's going on. I mean, I've just been reading more about it and just seeing more of the comic writers and uh, artists just talking about it more. And Frank Cho even kind of put up a big old um, message saying "f" you know comic day. But like I said, I read the comments and like I guess like I don't know people. Yeah, but Frank Cho is under fire for sexuality oh, shit. Oh, I he's, know because they're they're uh, and talking he's, about. But the, and I, he's doing it on purpose too. He's yeah, purposefully he, releasing images that he knows people will have a problem with, which is fine. Have you seen how much they're going for? On yeah, because basically. they're super nice. They're, they're really good, and they're basically porn. Let's be honest. They're no, but they're uh, yeah, but they're really good. They are. Like, he does amazing. I'll be drawings. watching all his stuff. Oh, yeah. time. Like he, he is. He's he, like, I got my full pan art book ready on King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which and that's fine. It's his right to do those things and yeah, draw people like fine. that. And honestly, you know, people were mad about trying to stop that stuff. You know, yeah. Now, I, to I, be I, fair, does that belong in a child's comic book? <laughs> yeah, probably. But he was not, just but, doing those for like on yeah, very, those are just uh, him. Yeah, yeah, he was doing those things, and that's totally one the commissioner's right and the commissionee's right. Yeah, to draw that. Not only that, you know, if you don't like him, don't support him. Don't buy his books. It's that simple. You know what I mean? So obviously, some people do like him and do enjoy the fucking stuff he makes. I was trying to find some because my favorite ones were the ones with Mary Jane and Spider Man. He's always talking about weed cakes. <laughs> Have you seen those? Yeah. <laughs> she says like, are those are these weed cakes going to my vibes or something? No, said. baby. Yeah, there was a couple. <laughs> I actually there's a whole thread of them that I pulled up the other day where it's all of his ones that are are literally saying SJW is freak out or something. Well, that's the other thing. Frank doesn't use that term. And that's why it pisses me off, I think, is the term. When you use a term, you're broadly categorizing all of these different things under one label, which they probably don't fit under. No. Because that's the thing. Social justice warrior. Now, are we talking about the message of the comic? Are we talking about the fact that the comic book character is such gender or, now? Or, yeah, or, and how, like I said, how long did that take? Was it a two-year setup like the Jane Foster one? Yeah, that one That one for sure was a good good you know yes. actually flip around and, and there's it, some that are still did a good job of writing that book for a while i still love because i read the god of thunder uh, oh yeah it's a good that one was a huh? good one because after they mentioned it in uh yeah i think you got to go back and, and i read it, it the art in that is so oh, good God. it's one of my favorites honestly 
honestly, as far as Thor's go, that that drawing picture of Thor in that series is like my vision of Thor. You know what I mean? Because that's the future, right? Is that supposed to be? No, like I think that's the past. Oh, you mean the future, future one? Yeah, and that the one. The Necro right? Sword and stuff. Yeah, like with Galactus. Thing. Yeah, because and... it looks like they're coming back to it. Yeah, now. yeah, they're going back to the future. Well, that's Future King, Ruin King Thor. Yeah, there we go. That's who it was. Okay, yeah. See, because I didn't know until I started reading. Which more I about just it. literally, uh, Which I you, went through and saw ego. like the comic. Yeah, yeah, the ego, the necro planet or whatever, the necro. So I want to see where he's gonna go with that story because it looks like it's gonna go pretty. It's good. just like interesting. Well, the, I thought it was interesting the whole fight between him and uh, old man Phoenix. That was a good story. I thought that was a cool issue. Cause, but he killed him right at the end of that one. Mm. I, yeah, it looked yeah, like he did, yeah, but we are a hundred percent. I don't think on it. Right, Frank. Look Jake, see, look, Frank keeps those outrageous get covers going. Frank Cho draws and makes money. Outrage, right? Because Bleeding Cool even had something to say about it. He didn't like it either. See, Bleeding Cool always says, like I said, what is he doing? Is he drawing people naked? And if he is, why is it we giving Frank Cho shit for drawing people naked and not the millions of other people, not mm. dozens? Not they, millions of other people drawing people naked in comics, your favorite characters on the internet right now. By turning them into parodies, apparently can't convince them to do it. Instead of even saying that, out. that's you, you're explaining yeah, what an art form is. Yeah. Outrage, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's what he says. And I'm okay with that. It's all right for some people to be outraged. Not Ooh, everybody has to like your thing. 1675 selling for that. I, that's the thing. I don't know if I'd pay for that. I mean, I'd just go buy some fucking... Oh, here's my favorite one right here. And May's Wheat Cakes. Mmm, what smells good? And he just wants that. <laughs> See, that's what, I don't know. See, that one fun. I'm laughing because that one's not even a very sexualized form. I chafe easily, so go easy on the starch. I'm going to be very easy. So just to fix it. That's the thing. Some of these aren't even sexualized. Oh, this one's bad though. Sai, get a hold of yourself, Barbara. So what if yours are sitting? Oh, sit. So what if yours of sitting in a wheelchair made your butt big? <laughs> I said, and that's what would happen. You're so, still that girl. No one can so, take that. Like away I said, from that, you. there was a whole post of them. And then there's the Joker way. in the corner. He's like, "Hey, butt girl," instead of that girl. <laughs> yeah, if you go, you can find them pretty easy. Uh, he's still a pretty good artist though. So I've like he's, uh, he I mean if you look at it, he he knows very much how to draw the female form, which is why people don't like him. Which one was my favorite? It was not that one. It was a new one he just did a couple days oh, he ago. Did so many. Yeah. I he, wanted he literally to do just one did. too for me when I was there, but I wonder yeah, how much he charges. Oh I'm sure that. these are that's a full so that's pile This like one's a, one of the good ones. Not that this one. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. And then the one with the bat pole. I love the ones with Power Girl because she just has the cleavage to make fun of. Like I said, I don't understand those. Like, are, is is there something especially demeaning about the female form? That's the thing. People are offended by this. Why? Is she doing something demeaning? Is she performing any sexual act? Now, the men in the picture whatever might be objectifying sexually whatever yeah but he's just drawing a picture of the female form so if you're angry at that picture with no other impetus right you know even with those jokes he's not you know what is he doing there all right this one really right in my boob window okay so what why are we mad at that you know what i mean what is the outrage Who's that in the background? Oh, it's Spider Gwen. She's oh, like okay. in the background of like ninety of these. I swear, it's his favorite outrage character because she has small breasts <laughs> in a thin form. She's lit. See, like even this one, like yeah, I guess so. But that's a Spider Man pose. That's not even a female pose, realistically. You know what I mean? What books did you read then? Unless I didn't get to finish one of my books. I got though. caught up finally. Not We're everything. Almost there. I'm almost there. There's a couple series that I have to start going again, but I got caught up on a lot of stuff. And then I had to catch up on some manga. I started actually a really good manga that I would love to see do some stuff. It's like a fighting manga, but it's like an underground fighting manga. And it's basically hmm. based in realism. Like there's some like off the wall shit. Kind of like, uh, what's it, Legendary Fight of Kiba? Right? I've been reading A Walk Through Hell, and you need to be reading A Walk Through Hell right now. A Walk Through I Hell. I need to be reading it right now, actually. 
I don't know which as one. As soon as I leave today, you need to fucking be reading it right now. I don't know which one that one I is. I swear to you, if you're not reading it, <laughs> then walk through hell and we'll slap you on the back. <laughs> alright, alright. It's so fucking good. Like, I just. Uh, I'll have to check it out. So it kind of starts off, right, with these FBI agents, and uh, there's this warehouse, right? Mm-hmm. And. Um, well, it actually starts off with this one guy who goes crazy and he just shoots up the whole mall. And the, and the husband, like, sees his wife and his baby get shot, you know, and everything. And then, um, I can't, can't remember. I have to reread it one more time to see where he plays into it. But, anyways, then they go to the FBI agents. And I guess they had sent some other FBI agents to check this thing that's going on in this warehouse. So they go, and uh, the cops are there, and they're like, they, how long have they been in there? You know, how come nobody tells us anything? Like, they've been in there for 85 days or and, you, and they're like, you didn't tell us or anything? Or you didn't send nobody in there, the SWAT team? And, and they're like, they don't want to go in there. They have like a bad feeling. Or no, they, they did go in there, right? But they only were in there for like 30 seconds, he says. And then they all come back out. And they just, they didn't want to go back in. They were done. Wow. And so they're just like, okay, well, fuck it then. We're, the two agents go in and they're like, <laughs> and the guy, um, He's about to tell him, no, don't do it, because then he uh, goes to check on the SWAT team. They all, all of them shot themselves. Wow. And so he's like, don't tell him to go in. And then he's like, oh, too late, bro. They don't know. Fuck. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like a gateway to hell or something. I don't know. You have to read it. It, was, it sounds interesting. It sounds kind of like the so plot good. of uh, Anything, Deep Space. I've been reading a lot of stuff from Aftershock now. Aftershock is good. Yeah. I've had a couple from them. I have that. I have a book called Beyonders. It's good, too. It's about a... A cryptic um, comic book, basically, and the the way that this comic bo- uh, book writer is doing it, he's putting like uh, symbols through each panel, and you have to decode this message, or whatever. And he said, and at the the very first issue, he even says, "Hey, there's uh, mess secret messages throughout the, all our books, and if you can figure it out through the whole end, there's a big surprise in for it at the very end of it." And he's like, "A big, big surprise." He's like, "It's nothing little." He's like, "This is something big." I don't wow. know what that means, but... Right, yeah. There's that book. What else have I been reading from Aftershock? Oh, there's one book you have to check out uh, called Lollipop Kids. It's, it just started last okay. week, so you have to Maybe check I that one out. That one's really good as well. I just sounded familiar. Maybe I saw it on my feed, because um, I have like the feed of stuff. That but The Walk Through Hell is the one for sure I'm like loving right now. Um, yeah, here is the even the cover for one of them. Oh, is it by Garth Ennis? Yeah, he's even oh, writing yeah. it. Yeah, so he's, I love that guy. He does good work. He did the Punisher series. So here, there's, so there's kind of the... I don't know if you want to read the whole... Oh, interesting. Yeah, Ennis does good, though. He's a preacher, the boys. He does a lot of shit. Yeah, see, that's why I, that's why I picked it up, because i seen that he did I told preaching. you, it, it, it's lately it's better, and even usually, it's better to follow your comic writer and your comic artist than it is to follow a company or a series, because those things change so often. So um, I picked that book, and that was, yeah, that book is just too good. You don't yeah. have to start getting into that one. I'll definitely check it out. It looks so like it's not that far, issue, yeah, so, so it won't take long. So yeah, you'll be good. Um, I think we're about hitting that time. It's almost 6 o'clock, yeah. so... Uh, I think we did a good breakdown today. We had fun talking about Venom and doing other things, but uh, hopefully you guys tune in for the next one. Uh, I don't know what we'll be talking about next time. Maybe Aquaman. Maybe who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Yep, we'll, we'll see, see what it. comes yeah. out because it's just a uh, mm-hmm. Michael Myers movie comes out in a few weeks. Yep, I won't be here though. So I'll be in Japan on the 18th. Mm-hmm. I'll be gone till the first. Damn, it's what, two weeks? weeks? Yeah, three weeks. <laughs> they wanted me to go that long. I was like, damn, I really don't want to go that long. See, like, that cover looks so good for it. But then, yeah, when you actually read the book, you're like, mm. not even that, like that, huh? Yeah, it's that sucks. I hate false covers like that. I wish they would just do covers in the style of the artist that's doing the book. Yeah. All right, then. Other than that, yeah, huh? I think that's all. All right, thank you, everybody. Yeah, you guys have a good one. Time. Salute. Superior Octopus, I at least read.